There are quite a few cases of people killing each other over video games. Let's look at a few. A lot of people can get momentarily annoyed or maybe even cuss a little bit upon losing a game, but have you ever been so angry that you would literally kill someone over it? How about killing someone for interrupting your game or preventing you from playing? Some other people have. I should say before we even start that video games do not make people violent, but adding rage to an already crazy person just probably isn't a good idea in most cases. That's something we're going to look into today. Let's start with the case of Alexandra Tobias, a young mother in Florida with a three-month-old son. She was really into a fairly stupid game called Farmville. Yeah, the Facebook browser game about growing plants that caused people to blow up your inbox with thousands of game invites. <laughs> Tobias was so into this game that she would lose her cool if anyone tried to interrupt her. Sadly, her baby did just that by loudly crying while she was trying to play. She flew into a rage and violently shook her baby, something that can easily be fatal or at least crippling for infants. Tobias told police that, after that, she went outside to smoke a cigarette and compose herself. She did not get composed. She came back inside and shook the baby once more, this time, quote, probably hitting his head on the corner of the computer monitor in the process. He died from a combination of the shaking and blunt force trauma. State guidelines call for about 25 to 50 years in prison for a crime like this. Tobias decided to plead guilty to second degree murder in order to get the shortest sentence possible. But the judge wasn't having it. He gave her a scathing lecture and sentenced her to 50 years in prison, the maximum. Tobias cried a little bit after the sentencing, but seemed fairly emotionless until that point. According to the Korea Times, a young man in South Korea, known only as Oh, aged 22, was often in fights with his mother about watching TV too much or playing video games too much. One day, after being told that he shouldn't be playing so many video games, he became enraged by her nagging. After she went to take a nap, he got a knife from the kitchen and stabbed her repeatedly while she was asleep in bed. He then watched some TV and went to an arcade, using her credit card in the process. He was soon caught and arrested. Back when Pokemon Go first came out and got really popular in 2016, a young college athlete named Calvin Riley was walking alone at Aquatic Park in San Francisco at about 10 p.m. at night. It's not known what happened leading up to this attack, but he was eventually shot in the chest by an unknown gunman. The motives are not known. Riley wasn't robbed, having nothing taken by the assailant. The gunman was never found or caught. As of now, there's a $110,000 reward for any information leading to the arrest of the attacker. If you have any information to contribute, I've posted the contact info for the park police in the description of this video. Chu Chengwei and Zhu Kaoyong were two young men in China who had gotten very addicted to the game Legends of Mer 3. This was a game that was heavily focused around fighting with oversized broadswords. The two men jointly won a rare sword together in a challenge. They decided to share ownership of the sword. Being a good sport, Chengwei decided to let his friend use the sword first. However, instead of simply using the sword for himself, Zhu decided to sell off the sword to another player for a whopping 7,200 yuan, roughly about $870, instead. Chang Wei was furious and attempted to get the sword back. He went to the police, but seeing that the sword wasn't an actual physical item, the police chose not to follow up on it. Either out of remorse or fear of legal action, Zhu offered to give him the profit he made from the sword. Already enraged by his actions and insulted by the offer, Chung Wei stabbed him in the heart as hard as he could, killing him. He then calmly turned himself into the police. Daniel Petrick was 16 years old when he suffered a pretty bad skiing injury that left him with a nasty infection and kept him locked up at home for quite a while. After playing it at a friend's house, he decided to pick up and play Halo 3. His father, who was a minister at the New Life Assembly of God in Wellington, Ohio, upon seeing the game, 
felt that it was a little too violent and intense for someone his age. His mom caught him playing the game after he was told not to, so they confiscated the game and hid it away, something they always said that they would do if he bought any violent video games. His father Mark locked the game away in a safe cabinet that he also used to hold his handgun. Uh oh. Daniel simply took his father's key, which was not at all hidden, and opened the safe, finding both the game and the handgun. He went into the living room, telling his parents, Close your eyes, I have a surprise. He shot his father in the head, and shot his mother in the chest, arms, and head. His mother died, but somehow his father survived. Daniel had attempted to cover up the killing by putting the gun in his father's hand in order to make it look like a murder-suicide. His sister soon came over, and Daniel attempted to prevent her from entering the house by saying that his parents were fighting. She heard groaning, however, and pushed her way in, finding the scene. Daniel grabbed his copy of Halo 3, threw it in the passenger seat, and drove off in the family car, but the police soon caught up to him. His lawyers claim that, due to an infection from the skiing accident and his mind being warped by playing the game, that he wasn't able to comprehend that death was permanent. But given that he both tried to cover up the crime and escape in the car, the judge wasn't really buying it. He was sentenced to life in prison with a chance of parole in 28 years. In a town in France called Cambrai, one young man hunted down and murdered another over Counter-Strike. 20-year-old Julian Barreau was playing with a man known only as Mikhail. They had challenged each other to a knife fight in the game, with Mikhail winning in the end. Barreau was so deeply butthurt by this loss that you may say he was even rump-ravaged, or that he suffered an ass disaster. He spent the next six months stalking Mikhail online and attempting to find his location. Somehow, he did find him, and he saw that Mikhail was living only a few miles away. Barreau then drove to his house, rang the doorbell, waited for Mikhail to come to the door, and stabbed him in the chest with a kitchen knife. However, Mikhail managed to survive, with the blade just barely missing his heart by a few centimeters. Police were called, and Barreau was caught and arrested within the hour, only telling police that he wanted to see his opponent wiped out after humiliating him online. Somehow, he only received two years in prison for this attempted murder. He was also ordered to undergo anger management therapy. That isn't even the only time that someone's been killed over Counter-Strike, either. In Russia, two teenagers were playing the game in an internet cafe. 17-year-old Alexei beat 14-year-old Alexander in a match, with Alexander being extremely offended at the loss. The two continued to drink, argue, and to go through rematch after rematch. Alexander did not do well. Alexander decided to leave the cafe and pretend he was going home. Instead, he waited outside to ambush Alexei once he left. He then surprised him with a flurry of punches, and once Alexei fell to the ground, he continued to heavily stomp on his chest. Intentionally or not, Alexei died in the attack. Alexander attempted to bury the body nearby, but he didn't hide it well, as passerbys found the body the very next morning. Despite the severity of the beating, Russian authorities deemed that the actual murder itself was accidental, and Alexander was only sentenced to about four years in a juvenile prison. I hope you're having fun, because there's yet another case over Counter-Strike. Xiao Wei, a 16-year-old boy in China, walked into a hospital with his friends. He had been stabbed with a large kitchen knife through the left temple. Only the handle of the knife was exposed. On the other side of his head, in the right temple, the tip of the knife was sticking out by about one centimeter. He was drenched in blood, but somehow calm and still coherent. Wei had been playing Counter-Strike in an internet cafe with some friends. After winning a match against some other men at the cafe, they were accused of cheating by using a program to see through walls. An argument ensued, and they were pulled outside of the cafe. Wei's friend was stabbed in his left arm, while Wei himself was beaten and stabbed through the head. Luckily, the knife hadn't gone through any major arteries or nerves. However, it is very possible that Wei may suffer some brain damage in the future. Surprisingly, it only took about two hours to safely remove the knife from his head. 
Miraculously, Wei is stable and seems to be doing okay for the most part. Police are trying to use CCTV from in and around the area to catch the assailants, but not having any luck so far. Sadly, a pretty significant number of these murder cases are actually due to neglect. Parents getting so into gaming that they often forget that they have kids. Let's take the case of Shannon Johnson, a 34-year-old mother in Colorado, for example. Shannon had become extremely addicted to a Facebook game called Cafe World. It's pretty much Farmville, but with a cafe. She put her 13-month-old son into the bath and left to go play some Cafe World. She zoned out and played for about 10 minutes while her barely one-year-old son was in the bath alone. After about three minutes of total silence, not hearing the water moving at all, she decided she'd probably better go check on him. She found him on his side in the water as he had drowned. Police weren't going to investigate the death, thinking that it was most likely an accident, until the autopsy report showed low oxygen brain injury, cardiac arrest, and drowning. She was arrested shortly after. She stated, and I'm not even joking here, that she didn't want to watch him in the bath because she didn't want him to be a mama's boy. In 2009, an unidentified mother in the UK was legally banned from using computers for the foreseeable future. The woman had been playing a Facebook game called Small Worlds, non-stop on the internet for months, only really stopping to sleep for about two hours at night. She neglected her kids to the point that they were eating cold baked beans from cans with their fingers while she refused to cook. The house slowly devolved into a hoarder's house, with junk and garbage piling up all over the floor. It got to the point where her two dogs starved to death, being left in the dining room for two months until they eventually mummified. Her two kids had been neglected to an extreme degree over the course of about six months. The woman received a suspended jail sentence and was barred from using computers for the foreseeable future. A young couple in South Korea met online and eventually moved in together and had a daughter. However, they began spending more and more nights at the Net Cafe, uh, hopelessly addicted to online games, until it became a big problem. Namely, with a game called Prius Online. Uh, not th that. Yeah, that one. They would leave their young infant at home unattended while they went to internet cafes. One of them would occasionally pop by the house to give her some powdered milk before leaving again. Eventually, the girl would starve to death. The parents hadn't been home in about 12 hours on this day. The police quickly investigated the death as a case of neglect, when it was very apparent that the girl was malnourished. The couple would flee to go stay with family, but were caught and arrested. The dark irony of this case was that the parents spent most of their time in the game raising an in-game daughter while their own suffered at home. They blamed the neglect on depression due to not being able to find jobs and giving birth to a premature baby. The father was quoted as saying, I am sorry for what I did and hope that my daughter does not suffer anymore in heaven. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there's supposed to be any suffering in heaven, so I think that's kind of the point. Of <laughs> Never mind. I think 10 or 11 cases is a pretty good place to leave off. They're all pretty depressing, especially the ones involving neglect. A lot of these problems seem to come down to a few factors. Uh, anger issues, poor impulse control, depression, or some combination of all three. So what can we pull away from all of this? Well, we know that one, Facebook games are awful. Two, Counter-Strike is infuriating. And three, feed your f***ing babies. Well, that's all for today. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe because I'm going to be posting a lot more kind of dark and mysterious content just like this. And uh, be sure you subscribe or they will kill me. That's what they told me. Anyway, see you later. Bye-bye.